Hello, I'm Kirk Weiler, and this is Common Core Algebra 2 by eMath Instruction. Today, we'll be doing Unit 4, Lesson Number 7, Mindful Percent Manipulations. Now, I like throwing this lesson in because one of the big, big emphasis of Common Core Algebra 2 is being able to move between percent growth based on one time period to percent growth based on another time period. Let me try to make more sense of that. Let's say that you know that a population is growing by 8% per year. Well, how much did it grow by the decade? You might think 8% per year, 10 years, 80% over the decade. And yet, that's not the way that it works. Likewise, if I knew, let's say, that something was growing by 50% over the span of 10 years, then how much did it grow every year? Again, you'd think 50% over 10 years, probably 5% every year. Again, not quite the way that it works. So today we're going to get, take a look at how we can manipulate percents in a way to change the time scale that we're looking at the percent on. Let's jump right into it. All right. A population of wombats. Yes, a wombat is a real thing. Google it. A population of wombats is growing at a constant percent rate. If the population on January 1st is 127, and a year later, 179, 1,079, 1,027, 1,079, what is its yearly percent growth rate to the nearest tenth of a percent? Well, I'd like you to work on this a little bit. This is the most basic percent question probably that you can get. If a number increases from something to something else, what percent did it grow at? Think about that a little bit. All right. Well, there's a lot of different ways to do this, but probably the most straightforward way is just taking 1,079 and subtracting 1,027. If we do that, we find that the wombat population went up by 52, right? If I then take the 52 wombats and I divide it by 1,027 and multiply it by 100 to turn it into a percent, what we find is that ends up being 5.0632, etc., etc., which is 5.1%. Some people like doing it this way. They, they kind of set up a little equation. They say, well, I'm going to take 1,027 and multiply it by x, let's say, and get 1,079. And then they divide, and they get 1,079 divided by 1,027, they end up getting 1.050632, etc. And then they kind of look at this and they go, ah, 5.1%. Right? Both ways work well, but somehow you've got to get that 5.1% increase per year. All right? That's an increase in the wombat population each year. Now what we're going to do is we're going to play around with that and see how fast are the wombat, how fast is the wombat population growing per decade? And then maybe shrink the time scale down, figure out how fast the wombat population is growing per month. Okay? But what I'd like you to do is pause the video now and write down anything you need to. Okay. Let's clear it out. And move on. Now let's try to determine what percent growth in the wombat population will be over a decade of time. We will assume that the rounded percent increase found in exercise 1 continues over the next decade. So remember, we were going up by 5.1% per year. All right, letter A. It says, after 10 years, what will we have multiplied the original population by rounded to the nearest hundredth? Show the calculation. Well, you know how this works, right? We're multiplying each year by 1.051. That's every year. But after 10 years, we've multiplied by 1.051 to the 10th. Now you might say, yeah, but what was our initial population? And the answer is, I don't care. I don't care because I'm not trying to predict the population. I'm just trying to predict the percent it increased by. So if I take 1.051 and I multiply by it 10 times, right? Because right? we'd multiply it by it once after one year. Then we multiply it by again after another year, right? We'd get to do that 10 times, right? We'd keep doing it. We'd get 1. Oh, what is it? 
6, 4, 4, etc. Right? Letter B says, using your answer from part A, what is the decade percent growth rate? All right. Well, think about this. We multiply by 1.051. We multiply by 1.051, etc. Or we multiply just once by 1.644, etc. Which is 1 plus 0.64, roughly. So we can say that our decade growth rate, let's say rounded to the nearest percent, is 64%. If you like it rounded to the nearest tenth of a percent, you could say it's 64.4%. But notice you would probably think that if you were growing at 5.1% for 10 years, you would have gone up by 51%. But we actually went up considerably more than 51%. Because when you repeatedly multiply, that summarizes by an exponent, right? So we don't get to take 5.1 and multiply it by 10. We take 1.051 and raise it to the 10th, right? Because we're getting to apply it 10 times. Now that's pretty straightforward. In the next exercise, we're going to make that time period get smaller. That's where things get a bit more confusing. Pause the video now and copy down anything you need to. Okay, clear it out. All right, exercise number three. Let's stick with our wombats from exercise number one. Assuming their growth rate is constant over time, again, that means that 5.1% per year increase what is their monthly growth rate to the nearest tenth of a percent? Assume a constant sized month. Months are one of the most irritating time units ever because when you have a unit that changes its size, it's a real problem. So we're just going to assume 12 months in every year. Now think about this for a moment, minute. We started off with that population, what was it? I think it was like 1,027, right? And over the span of a year, we multiplied it by 1.051 and we got, you know, 1,079. What we're now asking is, well, okay, let's say I, let's call it M. Multiply by M, multiply it by M, multiply it by M, right? This is like, like the months. Of course, we're going to do this 12 times. In other words, we're going to have that sort of 1,027 times the mo monthly multiplier to the 12th equals 1,079. And what we know is that we know that that's got to be 1.051, right? Whatever m to the 12th is has to give us what we multiplied by after a year, but that means we take the 12th root of 1.051 to shrink us back to the month time scale. So you can either think of it as the 12th root or the 1 12th power. So we're not going to divide the 5.1% by 12. We're going to raise 1.051 to the 1 12th. If you think about it, this is exactly what we did in the last exercise, right? Our, our time unit is, is the year. The month is 1 12th of a year. The decade is 10 years. Right? Now, if we do this, by the way, we're going to get a number very close to 1. It's going to be 1.00415, etc. This can be a little tricky, right? Because we always want to be able to think about our growth like this, 1 plus this. It could be tricky. You might think that's 4.1%. It's actually 0.4% right? per month growth rate per month. So it's really cool to go forward to make a larger time interval, if you will, we raise it to a sort of an integer exponent. To shrink our time scale down, going from the year to the month, let's say, then we're going to do a root or a fractional exponent, so to speak. All right, tricky, tricky, tricky. So pause the video now. Think about this before we move on. All right, here we go, clearing it out. Okay, let's see how much you understand this. 
Let's say that we have a population that's growing at a constant rate of 22% every five years. So that's the five-year rate, the half-decade rate. Every five years, we go up by 22%. Then what is its percent growth rate over a two-year time span? Round to the nearest tenth of a percent. So we know how much it grows every five years. We want to know how much grows every two years. Now, I still try to walk you through this a little bit. Letter A says, first, give an expression that will calculate the single year or yearly percent growth rate based on the fact that the population grew 22% in five years. Think about that for a moment. Pause the video. All right. Well, again, keep in mind the idea. After five years, five years, we get to multiply by 1.22. Two, three, four, five. That means every year, right, we're multiplying by 1.22 to the one fifth. So this is your yearly, I'm not going to say it's my yearly uh, growth rate, I'm going to call it my yearly multiplier, right? That's my yearly multiplier, okay? this. I don't even need to know what it's equal to. In fact, I don't want to know what it's equal to. That's what I multiply by every year. Now if I want to multi figure out what I multiply by every two years, I'll take this and I'll square it. Now we could do that in two calculations or if we understand fractional exponents, we could figure out 1.22 to the two-fifths. So let's do that on our calculator. Take a minute. right? That's as simple as just typing it in. 1.22 to the two-fifths is 1.0827. Yep, that's it, which is 1 plus 0.0827. Take a look at this. That's an 8.3% growth rate every two years. Isn't that kind of cool? So we take that 22% over a five-year span, we bring it down to a one-year by raising it to the one-fifth, and then we extend that to two years by squaring. All right. Percents are all about exponents. They're all about exponents. Right? Make the time period larger, we raise to a sort of a whole number exponent, make it smaller, and we raise to a fractional exponent. Okay, pause this video because next we're going to go on to percent decrease, and that's more challenging. Okay, let's do it. Oh boy. World oil reserves, the amount of oil unused in the ground, are depleting at a constant 2% per year. So they're going down 2% per year. We would like to determine what percent decline will be over what, what the percent decline will be over the next 20 years based on this 2% yearly decline. Letter A says write and evaluate an expression for what we would multiply the initial amount of oil by after 20 years. Well keep in mind that every year we're not going to multiply by 0 0.02, we're going to be multiplying by 0.98. Right? This goes right back to what we did in the last lesson with percent decrease. Now that's what we're going to multiply by every year. Right. Every year we're going to multiply by 0.98 because we're going to have 98% left of what we had the year before. So after 20 years, we're going to multiply by this. Now if we do that, and I clearly can't do this in my head, I seem to have actually lost that sheet. Let's do it. We're going to get 0 0.98, 0.98 to the 20th. And that's 0.6676, etc. So that's what we multiply by every 20 years. Now, this is tricky. Letter B, it says use your answer in A to determine the percent decline after 20 years. Be careful. Round to the nearest percent. See, a lot of my students, even high level students, will look at that answer for part A and go, all right, it declined by what? 66.8%. 
No, that's not true, right? That's actually what's left over. We have, let's say, 66.8% left, left over. The percent that's declined will be 100% minus 66.8%. Let's do that really quickly. Try not to turn the computer too much. And what we find is 33.2% decline. Now again, think about this for a second. This is a little counterintuitive. You would think if it was going down 2% per year for 20 years, it would go down 40%, 20 times 2. But it's not how much it goes down. It only declines 33.2% over 20 years. Again, it's very tricky. Most people get the idea of taking 0.98 and raising it to the 20th. The key then is that the decimal that you have represents the fraction of the oil, in this case, or the fraction of the original that continues to be there. If we want to know how much has gone away, we have to subtract that percent from 100. And that really can get students. Okay, pause the video now. Think about this before we go on. All right, let's do it. Let's clear out the text and take a look at another problem. All right, one of the most common places that high school students run into percent decrease is when they talk about half-life in chemistry. So let's take a look at that. Exercise six says a radioactive substance's half-life is the amount of time needed for half or 50% of the substance to decay. Let's say we have a radioactive substance with a half-life of 20 years. Okay, fair enough. So that means every 20 years, right, we're going to have only 50% radioactivity that we had, you know, when we started. Letter A, what percent of the substance would be radioactive after 40 years? Well, most people, most people get this, right? You know, we know that after 20 years, we're going to multiply by one half. Now, we could think of it the way we did in the last case. We could say, well, let's bring it back to the, to the yearly decrease, right? One half to the 120th, but then we would raise it to the 40th. Now we can use exponents, multiply 120th and 40th, to just get one half squared. Many students would just start with this because they'd say, look, if one half life is 20 years, then 40 years is two half lives we would get to multiply by one half twice. Now that turns out to be 20.25, which means that 25% is still radioactive. Now some students right now will say, wait, 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 wait. You told us we were supposed to take that and subtract it from one and, you know, get like 75%. Yeah, but here, I want to know how much still is radioactive. What percent of the substance, uh, substance would be radioactive? You see, at the beginning, 100% is radioactive. But after two half-lives, only 25% of it is radioactive. Letter B. What percent of the substance would be radioactive after only 10 years? Round to the nearest tenth of a percent. Take a shot at this. See what you get. Now again, a lot of people might say, that should be 75%, right? I mean, after, after 20 years, we're going to have 50%. So, you know, after only half that time, 10 years, maybe like 75% radioactive. But again, it just doesn't work out that way. One half to the 120th, again, gives us what we have on a yearly basis. Raised to the 10th now. Now again, it's pretty easy. What it really means is that we have one half to the one half, if you want we have the square root of one half. You don't really have to be thinking about this. You can just think about one half to the one half. And of course, you're gonna let your calculator do that. 0.5 to the 0.5 gives me 0 0.7071, etc. So that means 70.7% is radioactive. Radioactive. I think it wouldn't be that hard to spell radioactive. 
Finally, what percent of the substance would be radioactive after only five years? Why don't you go ahead and do this one? You probably caught on at this point. All right. So after only five years, most of it is going to be radioactive, right? We've barely had any time. One half to the one twentieth raised to the fifth will be one half to the five twentieths, which you could definitely just put in that way, or you could have one half to the fourth, and that would be point eight four zero eight nine etc. And that would be about 84.1%. All right. So a little radioactive decay there. All right. Take some time, pause the video, and think about this problem. All right. Let's clear out the text and wrap up this lesson. All right. Percents show up in the real world almost more than any other mathematical topic. You know, you see them all the time, whether it's on mortgage payments or credit card debts or, you know, interest that you're going to get on some kind of an investment. You know, it's all out there. Um, knowing how to take a percent growth or decay over a certain time period, very often a year, and then extend it to longer time periods or shorter time periods is pretty essential not just for this math class, but for being just kind of an educated adult in our society. All right, and hopefully this lesson has given you some good techniques to do that. For now, I'd like to thank you for joining me for another Common Core Algebra 2 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, keep thinking, keep solving problems.